Okay, this is going to be the fifth video in the series on Taylor polynomials. In this video, we'll look at uh, Taylor polynomial where f of x is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus x. Now, a lot of my students are a little bit confused about this because in the previous videos, we've done what we call common functions. We did the sine of x, the cosine of x, e to the x, and uh, the natural log of x. But when you see 1 divided by 1 minus x, uh, the question is, why is this one special? What's so important about this? Now, if you look at the graph, it's just really a rational function, uh, and it has an asymptote where x is equal to 1 because you'd have division by 0. So it looks like this. So this is what the graph is. And we're going to be particularly interested in this area right around uh, 0, say from about minus 1 to 1. So we'll center our Taylor polynomial there. Now, we'll follow exactly the same process that we did in the previous videos. So... Uh, <clears throat> If you haven't done it yet, I would definitely watch those previous videos to get an idea of how we get to this point. Then at the end of this video, we'll take a look at why this particular function is important and why it fits in with those other four. So let's begin by following exactly the same process and deriving the polynomial just like we did in the previous videos. Now, in those previous videos, we started with a definition. So again, the definition of a general Taylor polynomial centered at some point x equals c would be this top definition right here. And as we did in the other ones, if it happens to be centered at zero, then it's de uh, defined to be a Maclaurin polynomial, and it takes this form right here. And since ours is centered at zero, the first thing we'll do is take this definition and just copy it onto our page because it'll make it easier to find the coefficients. So <clears throat> uh, to begin with, uh, let's just go ahead and write the, that uh, definition down. And if you put it down, it'll look like this. So what we've got is... Uh, we want to find these coefficients, so just like we did in the previous videos, we'll need to find the derivatives and evaluate the derivatives at zero. So we'll use exactly the same steps that we did before. So uh, again, on this side I'd build up two columns, and we'll go ahead and put uh, the derivatives in this column. So this will be find the derivatives right here. So in this side we will find the derivatives, and That'll take care of that column. Then I would work in two columns. So in this column over here, it will be to evaluate the derivatives. So evaluate um, each derivative. And we'll evaluate those derivatives at x is equal to, in this case, 0. So it'll look like this. Again, just exactly like what we've done in the previous videos. <coughs> um, so uh, to start with, we'll write the original function down. So f of x is equal to, and in this case, it's 1 divided by 1 minus x. Now, a suggestion, if you left it in this form, you're going to have to use the quotient rule to find the derivatives. So the first thing I would do is change the form, and I'm going to do it like this. Put parentheses around this and make it to the first power. So if I move it from the denominator to the numerator, I can write it like this, 1 minus x to the negative 1 power. Now, the reason you want to do that is that gets you away from the quotient rule. If I do it like this, now I can use the chain rule to find the derivatives. So let's go ahead and try that. So we'll find the first derivative, and using the chain rule, now remember what the chain rule says, it's the derivative of the outer part times the derivative of the inner part. So this would be minus 1 times 1 minus x, and instead of the negative 2 or 1 power, now it's to the negative 2 power. And I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that now, um, and I'll also then times the derivative of what's on the inside, which is a negative 1. So that's the derivative of the outer part. This is the derivative of the inner part. Now, a negative 1 times a negative 1 would turn into a positive 1, so this will become 1 times 1 minus x to the negative 2 power. And then I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it back in the original form again because it'll be easier to evaluate later on. So this is the same thing as 1 divided by, uh, this would be 1 minus x. And I'll take this negative 2, move it back to the bottom, make it be a positive 2. So it looks like that. And we'll find a couple more derivatives. So the second derivative... And starting with this one, well, again, we'll use the chain rule again. This will become minus 2 times 1 minus x. Now it'll be to the negative 3 power times the derivative of what's on the inside, which would be a minus 1. 
Now again, minus 2 times a minus 1 would turn into a positive 2 times 1 minus x. This time it'll be to the negative 3 power. And again, I'm going to rewrite that in this original form again, just because it makes it easier to evaluate. So I'll leave the 2 in the numerator and make this be 1 minus x now to the third power. So that's the second derivative. And we'll find one more. So the third derivative would be, and again, just use the chain rule on this. So that's going to be negative 6 times 1 minus x to the negative 4 power uh, times the derivative of what's on the inside, which is a negative 1. Now the two negatives make a positive, so that'll turn into a positive 6 times 1 minus x to the negative 4th power. And again, I'll do the same thing I did in these previous ones. I'll rewrite it with a positive exponent. So this becomes 6 divided by uh, 1 minus x to the positive 4th power. So it looks like that. So now I've got the original function and the derivatives. Now, just like in the previous videos, we'll now take each one of these, come straight across, and evaluate them with x is equal to 0. So on the first one, if you take a 0 and plug it in for x, you would have 1 divided by 1 minus 0, and that's going to give you a 1. Now, <coughs> plug a 0 into the second one. So this would be 1 divided by, um, this would be 1 minus 0 squared. And if you evaluated this, <coughs> you would also get a 1. <coughs> now, let's go to the third or second derivative. <coughs> Again. It's 2 divided by 1 minus 0 squared. The denominator will become a 1, so that'll turn into a 2. And then finally, in this last one, you'd have 6 divided by uh, 1 minus 0 squared, which would be 6 divided by 1, which would be a 6. So this will give you these co the blue coefficients up here as we put them in the thing. Now, just like we've done in the previous videos, I like to rewrite this formula again before I begin to substitute these definitions in, or the coefficients in. So I'm going to do this. I'll come up to here, and I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'll just take this function, and I'm going to take the entire function and just move it down and rewrite it one more time down here. And I would suggest you do that, too, because it just makes it easier to make sure that you're not leaving out any coefficients. So now we'll go back up, and we'll begin to fill these things in. So what you've got now looks like uh, this. We've got the original function, so we want the polynomial. So the Taylor polynomial in this case uh, is a function of x, and it looks like this. So the first thing, it says the original function evaluated at 0, which is 1. So you'll have a 1 right there. Then you've got a plus. Then you've got the first derivative evaluated at 0, which is also a 1, times x raised to the first power. Then you've got uh, the second derivative evaluated at 0, which would be a 2. So this is going to be um, 2 divided by, now again you've got 2 factorial, 2 factorial times x squared. So x squared here then plus, then the third derivative would be 6 divided by 3 factorial times x cubed, and then it goes on for as far as you want to go. Now, usually you want to simplify this, so let's go ahead and simplify these. So we'll take it up to here, and, make, and I'll rewrite it one more time as the Taylor polynomial would be First of all, I'll leave the 1 alone. Then this becomes plus x. Now, 2 factorial is 2, so 2 divided by 2 would be 1. This will just turn into an x squared. Then 3 factorial is 6, so 6 divided by 6. This will turn into an x cubed. Now, I'd also like to write the general term if I went out and had uh, n terms. And again, we've just like we've done in the previous videos, I would suggest you do it like this. This is going to be the zero term. This would be the first term. Uh, n equals 2 and so on. n equals 3. 
And what you'll see is that whatever n is, the exponent is the same thing. So that means that when you get out here to the end, you can put a plus, and this would just become x raised to the n power. So what this is, this is the Taylor polynomial for the original function. Now let's do the same thing we've done in the previous videos. Let's go ahead and look at this graphically and see what this would look like if you used a few terms to model this thing. So we'll move it up, say, to about right here. And let's go back to the original graph, and we'll see how each one um, of these models, what the graph looks like. So we'll start with this. Now, we'll do exactly the same thing that we've done in those previous videos. Let's begin with this one right here. Suppose we just wanted to go uh, with just y is equal to 1. Well, if you did a y is equal to 1 and actually graphed it, it would look like this. You would just have a horizontal line through y is equal to 1. Now let's zoom in just a little bit on that and see what this thing looks like. So we'll get in here and go in a little closer here. And we just want to concentrate, say, on this area right in here. So that gives you the pink graph, y is equal to 1. And again, not a very good model because immediately, the only place that's really any good is when x is equal to 0. It immediately separates from the graph and you don't get a good model. So let's do the same thing that we've done in the previous videos. Let's go back and try uh, a, adding more terms to it. So now if we came up here and added a second term to it, so let's do y is equal to 1 plus x. And what that would look like would be this. We'll go and do this graph. And that's this yellow line right here. So you've got a straight line that goes through it. And again, it starts out as a good model, but it begins to separate fairly quickly here. And again, we'll get in reasonably close to take a look here, uh, say to about right here. So now uh, if you use two terms, you get that yellow line. Suppose you added another term. So let's go back up and let's add uh, these first three terms. So if you put three terms together, now you'll get a second degree polynomial. And let's see what that one looks like. So if you go to a second degree polynomial, it does this. <laughs> and you'll get this green graph. And again, the green graph does a better job than either the pink graph or the yellow graph of approximating this thing. And again, we'll zoom in just a little bit closer again, get an idea of what it looks like. And let's go ahead and add a cubic term to it. So if we went from here back up here, uh, picked up a cubic term. Now you'll get a cubic to model it, and what that graph would look like would be this. Okay, so you get this red graph. Now again, the red graph does a better job than the other ones. So each time you add an additional term, you get a little bit better model. The model tends to conform to the blue graph. The original graph is that blue graph right there. And then finally, just to see what it looks like, let's say I had one extra term. So suppose you had a fourth degree polynomial, and it'll be whatever this next term would be right here. And let's just take one quick look at that one. So if you draw it, you would get this light blue graph, and it would look like this. Now, if you zoomed in around any particular area, let's go in right around here. Suppose we went in about x is equal to 0.2, and we wanted to see how these different graphs appear. If you zoom in, now notice what happens as we go on. Initially, the yellow graph begins to separate immediately. But the closer you get, each of the other graphs begin to separate also. So that green graph, this is the yellow graph is a first degree one. Uh, the green graph is a second degree, and it begins to separate. As you go in closer, uh, the red graph is a cubic, and it begins to separate. And if you get in close enough, eventually even that fourth degree graph will begin to separate. Uh, so the dark blue graph is the original graph, and you can tell a fourth degree one is actually a pretty accurate model. Uh, it would be accurate to within about two decimal places over here, about 1.25. Then if you zoom back out again, all the graphs collapse back to the original model. So from a distance, they all look pretty good, but it's only when you get in close that you begin to see. Uh, and just like all the other things, in general, uh, the closer you are to the center, the more accurate the model is going to be, and also the more terms you add, the more accurate the model is going to be. But if you go out far enough, then eventually they all begin to separate, and uh, that's what the thing looks like. So anyway, this is what a Taylor polynomial for 1 divided by 1 minus x looks like. 
Now, one last thing let's look at um, is why is this one important? So let's bring this back down and take one last look at why this thing fits in with the sine, the cosine, e to the x, and the natural log of x. Okay, now to start with, you, uh, a reminder, so what we've got is this f of x is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus x. But let's first of all look back at a geometric series. Now you might remember that uh, a geometric series takes this form right here, the summation of a sub 0 times some uh, ratio raised to the n power. So a sub 0 times r to the n power. But uh, if you wrote this out in summation form, it would look like this. <clears throat> so if you put it out, there would be a sub 0 times r to the first power, a sub 0 times r to the second power, and so on. Now if you went way on out, you might remember uh, the definition for the sum would be equal to a sub 0 over uh, 1 minus r. So the sum of the geometric series turned into that right there. Now, if we uh, allowed a sub 0 to be equal to 1, let's go ahead and do that, um, you would come up with this. If, if a sub 0 was allowed to be 1, the series turns into this, and all that happens is all those a sub 0's turn into a 1, and it takes this form right here. 1 plus r to the first power plus r to the second power plus r uh, <coughs> cubed, and so on. And what this one would be, if you went way out to the end, it would be equal to 1 over 1 minus r. Now the reason this is important is take a look at this and kind of compare it to this form down here. You just showed in, in that last derivation that the Taylor polynomial for this thing right here is 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed and so on plus all the way out to um, plus x to the n. And <coughs> you showed that it was equal to this. So the sum of this thing is equal to this, which is exactly what this is. So the reason f of x is equal to 1 over 1 minus x is important is that this is actually a form of a geometric series. So whenever you see it in this form and you do the Taylor polynomial, you'll come up with a geometric series that behaves like this. So uh, 1 divided by 1 minus x is important because it actually takes the form of the sum of a geometric series. So that's a look at that one, and that completes the basic uh, geometric uh, Taylor's series.